hear a lot of noise about hydrogen recently and most particularly hydrogen as a potential fuel for the future. But what actually is hydrogen and how can we most importantly use it? Um, first, um, what we know now is that hydrogen is the most abundant element on Earth. It is mainly composed of um, a single proton and a single electron, but it rarely comes alone. It is um, composed with oxygen. It creates H2O, which is uh, very important to remember uh, for later on. Composed with um, carbon dioxide, it creates um, methanes. Now, um, I will start with a little bit of um, history, because um, back in the day, we didn't really know um, all of this. In fact, you will be glad to know that it is a British man, however born in France, called uh, Henry Cavendish, a chemist and a physicist, who in 1766 um, distinguished hydrogen as a single element. Scientific knowledge at the, at the time was not um, very developed, and therefore um, he identified two types of air the non-flammable air, which was composed of carbon dioxide, and the flammable air, which is actually hydrogen. And through his experiences, um, he identified that the burning of hydrogen actually created water, which, as I, rem as I mentioned earlier, is H2O. Um, so this, actually, this process w identified that through the burning of hydrogen actually condensed some water. Now, how did we use it um, later on? A couple of years later, this saw the development um, of the air balloon flight in 1783 in France, um, which saw the, the, the first airship um, coming, coming into place. Um, airships were very fashionable at the time uh, because they were very practical uh, and it was very futuristic as well. Um, they were mainly used uh, for, for transport and hydrogen was therefore used as a fuel. However, their very poor and um, their very poor usage and uh, track records. Uh, you may also remember the um, Hindusburg disaster in 1937, which saw the um, airship flight uh, burning into flames. Um, this German airship um, in, in the in the track, um, which saw the end of uh, of the airship era, and actually saw the end of uh, hydrogen being used as a fuel. Now today we still use hydrogen. Um, in mainly in industrial purposes. However, um, we use it to make um, ammonia, for example, uh, and this is used for fertilizer. Um, we also use it, um, adding it into fat through the process of hydro-generated process, and you will find it in your morning peanut butter, for example. Um, so there is different uses of hydrogen today, but not really um, as a fuel. So let me now go back to a little bit uh, back in time in the um, 19th century and the industrial revolutions to explain the, the beginning of um, the, the usage and the drastic usage of um, energy sources. So in the, 18th, um, in the 1800s, you will see um, the development of um, energies to power uh, steam engines and factories um, but also, fuel was at the time used to, um, to, to fuel people's homes and used to cook. Um, and this fossil fuels was used as a fairly cheap way um, for, for powering uh, people's homes. Um, the fossil fuel used were mainly, um, mainly made of uh, coal, oil, gas, uh, but also renewable sources such as your windmill and your hydro water um, generated power. So we used 
uh, we use through the industrial revolution energy and fossil fuel in extensive amounts. This, um, <coughs> at the time, we did not realize um, how damaged it could be to the planet and to the future generation to come. In fact, it is important to mention that these um, fossil fuels are still widely used today. Um, these are mainly natural gas, petroleum and coal, which amount to nearly 85% of the primary energy consumptions in the world today. In fact, your homes is probably uh, heated by a, a gas boiler as well as you're, you're probably using your cooker and uh, for powering your, your, your shower. Um, your car uh, may be running on diesel or petrol, and this is the same, uh, the same apply for the industry. Um, so we need to lean away from the reliance on, on fossil fuel. And um, researchers mentioned that actually by 2050, uh, we may lack of these resources. However, there is a second important um, challenge to, um, to, to fossil fuels, uh, which is climate change. Now, the burning of fossil fuels um, creates carbon dioxide, which trapped in the, in the atmosphere for a long period of time um, creates temperature to rise. And this is um, what we see as, um, as the climate uh, emergency and climate change. Um, and therefore, we have to, uh, when we think about the decarbonization of the UK, we not only need to find first alternative to fossil fuels, but also um, find solutions to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So what are we doing in the UK and particularly in the Northwest to help and to lean away from this reliance on fossil fuel and to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions? Now, there is a, a lot of initiatives happening in the Northwest for decarbonizing heat. And by that, I mean your homes, but also the industry. However, um, today I will just focus on transport um, because transport is mainly the, um, the, the largest uh, emitter of um, carbon emissions. Um, and when I think about transport, this, um, this comprise of road transport, maritime, rail, but also the aviation. In the, within this sector, road transport is the largest emitter um, of carbon dioxide. And you will, road transport is made of um, the car you use every day to go to your nearest supermarket or walkable um, takeaway. This is your Tesco delivery driver that provided you with um, your very important uh, toilet paper during the lockdown. Um, but also um, construction vehicles um, to build our houses or the roads nearby or, or the um, very he heavyweight vehicles um, that travels from China to deliver your electric tablets or your, uh, your, your fruit and veg coming from anywhere in the world because we can now find in the supermarket bananas, kiwis and all of those products at any time uh, whenever we want. So this change in, consu consume, uh, in the consumers um, kind of made these sectors um, more and more important. We are heavily reliant on road transport nowadays. We are getting used to, um, to having everything we want, whenever we want. However, we need to change the way we are getting those products so that we can get them in a more sustainable way. And this, um, this means changing the way we actually fuel those vehicles. And this is exactly the thinking 
behind Project Vanguard, which we initiated with the Cheshire East Council in 2019. Now, most of you will be aware that most of the councils in the UK um, declared the climate emergency. And by that, um, they took actions uh, to actually um, help decarbonize their region. However, most of the homes or your homes is, is not owned by the council, nor are the industries nearby or passing by. And this, this is not an easy task for, for the council, but um, they have a role to um, lead the way in, in the decarbonization. And what they do is providing services to the residents. One of these services is waste services provided by Cheshireist uh, through their wholly owned company, um, Anza, which you may have seen um, collecting your waste. So refuse trucks can actually be converted to fuel, cell to fuel cells running on hydrogen fairly easily. And this is what Project Vadgard um, is intending to do with the conversion of two refuse trucks running off hydrogen. However, how are we actually going to produce this hydrogen to fuel those vehicles? Now, green hydrogen is produced uh, using clean electricity from renewable sources. And by electrolyzing the water um, to separate the um, hydrogen atom to its um, molecular twin oxygen. If you remember at the beginning of the talk, I mentioned H2O, the hydrogen and the oxygen. Now, to create this green hydrogen, um, we are going to, uh, we have secured a planning permission um, to install a large solar panel PV array on um, the environmental hubs um, of uh, Cheshire East, which is located um, in Middlewich. These um, solar panel will create the green electricity and this green electricity will then be connected to the a grey recycling um, water hub um, to create the electrolysis. So you, we will have the solar PV um, powering the water. This will create the electrolysis and we will separate the molecules to create hydrogen. Now, as we live in the UK, the sun is not shining every day. We are quite lucky today, as you can see, um, but it's, it's not happening every day and we therefore need uh, to store the hydrogen so we can use it when we need it. We will thus um, have a, a reservoir or a tank uh, close to the production unit so that um, we can store this hydrogen at times uh, not needed. Um, for example, the vehicles may not be running at weekends um, and, and this would be very important um, to, to be able to use hydrogen whenever, uh, whenever the, the trucks will be needed. How are we going to fuel those vehicles? We need a refueling station. So the refueling station will be installed at the same location next to the current diesel refueling station. So this is um, the thinking behind a Project Vanguard and hopefully um, if all goes well you will be able to see um, those two refuse trucks coming to collect your domestic waste in April next year. So this may not seem as a very big impact on the large scale. However, if we all focus on, uh, on, on accomplishing the little things, greater impact might follow suit. In fact, you can already go and purchase a hydrogen car and you will soon find um, hydrogen coming into your homes. 
I hope this gives you a great overview of why hydrogen will be a fuel for the future.